If you have traveled often in Africa, you might have wondered why it's easier and often far cheaper to fly from one African city to another by going through Europe. For nearly 30 years, African Union officials have tried and failed to implement an agreement to make the entire continent one connected free airspace for civilian aircraft. Proponents say that enacting this treaty would boost African airlines and much needed transportation options and one man has even written a book about it. And joining me now via Skype from Johannesburg is VOA's Anita Powell. Anita, thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Imran. Thanks. Hey, tell us a bit about this. You know, I mean, this treaty has been, uh, you know, I mean, they've been talking about this since a long time, and I don't seem to understand what is the uh, issue here. Why, why don't they want this treaty implemented? Well, let, let me go ahead and try to explain this 264-page book in about 15 seconds. In 1988... African nations agreed, 44 of them agreed, to implement this liberalization policy, which would make air traffic cheaper. What happened in ensuing years, uh, fast forward to about 2000, it became legally binding, many countries just flatly ignored it. And there's several reasons, according to the very well-versed, knowledgeable source I spoke to, Charles Schlumberger of the World Bank. One is lack of political will. Another is airspace uh, landing fees, sorry, at airports are cash cows. They bring much needed revenue into African countries and airports are just very profitable enterprises. Who would want to let go of that? And another reason is many African countries are trying to protect their rather fragile uh, national carriers. And so opening up the airspace would allow the big boys, and I'm talking about African big boys, Ethiopia, um, maybe Kenyan Airlines, SAA of, out of South Africa to come in and basically run over the competition. Is there also a concern that once they do this, it, it kind of opens the doors of potential terrorism? Ah, I want to be really clear about the Yamasukra Declaration and decision. They apply to civilian airspace only. Military airspace is a whole different kettle of fish. Those are different agreements, and those are diff uh, governed in very different ways, and of course subject to those those sorts of things. Is this going to, for example, um, open up the possibility of another, you know, Nigerian underpants bomber? Mm -hmm. Maybe. If you have more flights flying over that certain airspace, are more people going to try to target them? Possibly. But that's not as a consequence of this decision. Liberalization of airspace is not going to necessarily um, open the door for terrorism. What about uh, the matters being taken up by the African Union this year? Do you think something would come out of that? Right. So the AU actually, in its summit, they did actually agree to move further with the Yamasukra Declaration. Uh, remains to be seen whether this is going to have any effect. I mean, they haven't already. It's uh, been enforced since about 2000, and nothing has happened. I don't really know what teeth they have, but let's see. Well, we'll keep an eye on that. Anita Powell with VOA in Johannesburg. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.